On this video, I'm going to show you how to take this photo. With a minimalistic lighting setup of only one light, it's fast, easy, and it gives great results. I hope you like it. Alright guys, so I'm going to show you this minimal setup that you can do to do product photography um, with the least amount of equipment and get some pretty nice results. So the first thing that we got to do is set up our background and for this I'm using a sheet of acrylic and two, uh, two clamps that you can get in Home Depot, b &H Photo and uh, I just recommend that they're not a very bright color because uh, in some occasions uh, the color can be reflected onto your product. Um, so if you have nowhere to put your clamps, a good place to put them is on your shirt. Um, that way you can use your other hand to place the background exactly where you want it and um, clamp it down. You just got to make sure that it has this, um, it's leaning against the wall and it has this shape so that it looks like um, it's like an infinite background so that it doesn't end. And once it, it's clamped down like that, um, you know, we're done. We're ready to put our product. Um, and the product that we're going to be photographing today is a, is a leave-in conditioner. Um, here it is. It's, uh, it's by a brand called Hiel. And I also want to try adding the box just to add um, a level of complexity. And maybe I can give some tips on photographing multiple objects in the same image. Uh, so I'm just going to roughly put them in and uh, make sure that they're straight. We can always fine tune this later. And um, another tip that I can give is when you are photographing two products uh, like that next to each other with only one light, it can be, it can be challenging for both of them to get, um, to get illuminated. So a nice trick is to move one of the items a little farther back. Um, I usually do the box because it's bigger and it makes the proportions of the of the products look uh, look better and that way by placing it back like this when I illuminate it the light is gonna hit the box and it's not gonna cover the light from hitting the bottle as well so once we got this um, set up I am I want to bring my camera just to frame the shot and then we can add um, our light for the camera, you can use any camera. Really, you can even use your phone. The only thing that you need um, is uh, a camera with manual exposure. And there are apps for cell phones that you can use that um, let you control uh, your camera manually so that you can control your ISO and your shutter speed. So I'm just going to frame my image. Um, I'm using right now a focal length of around 85 millimeters but anything between 50 and 105 millimeters uh, will do you just don't really want to use um, a wide angle lens because sometimes those do create uh, distortion and you don't want the products to look distorted okay so now i got my products uh framed and I'm gonna add the one light uh, that we're gonna use. So the light that we're using um, is an LED light. And um, if you don't really, if you don't have a light, you can also use a lamp. Um, the only thing that I recommend is using a, a bulb that is daylight balanced because uh, some bulbs um, that are tungsten give this yellow um, hue and it can affect the colors of your products. So I'm just putting the light a little bit uh, to the side and um, so that it hits the front of the products. But I, wanna, I do want to give a little bit of a, a dimensional light. So by doing this, um, we, we, you can see that by placing the, the box a little bit uh, backwards, both products are getting illuminated. All right, so I've set up the camera, um, this camera over here to record. Um, 
so that you can get a better idea of uh, what each light is doing and the effect um, of each of the elements that we're gonna add in order to improve the light. Um, so right here, um, as I mentioned, we have um, a directional light that is illuminating both of the products, but um, it's just a bit harsh and also the other side of the product is very dark and it's very hard to read the text. So in order to fix that, what we're gonna do is add, um, we're gonna add a reflector and uh, this, the reflector is this over here and this is a foam board and you can buy this in, your, in an art supply store and um, I just cut it in half but not all the way. I just made uh, the top layer and I cut through it and left the bottom layer without being cut and this way it can fold like this and by doing that what you can do is it makes it very easy to place this on your setup and, and you can just place it in the position that you want and what this should do is help us lift um, some of the shadows. Now the image is a bit overexposed so I am going to expose correctly for that. So you can see now that without this it's a lot darker and now when I add the reflector is helping fill those things in a bit more. So now uh, what else can we do to improve this image? Um, well, the next thing that we need is what I believe is one of the most important elements that a product photographer needs and it's a diffuser. Uh, since we're doing a minimal setup, uh, I'm just going to use a white sheet of plexi and um, this is gonna help us turn this image into, take this image into the next level because as of now, this lighting is not very flattering. So what I'm gonna do, this is the, the plexiglass sheet and I'm gonna clamp it and put it on the surface. And by putting the clamp at an angle like this, it's gonna help it stay in place. So I'm gonna slide it in between the light and the products. And then we just got to make sure that it's going to stay in place. All right. So let's see what we got. Okay. I'm going to move this so we can get a little bit more of the surface. And uh, I feel like this already makes the image look better. However, when we added this diffuser over here, the light got a bit darker. So. I am just gonna adjust the exposure for that. I think something like this will be better. So now that we have the lighting set up, um, I'm gonna take off the recording of the camera and we're gonna snap some images and uh, see exactly uh, what we got. So this light I'm moving so that no direct light is hitting the product, just that all the light that's hitting the product is getting diffused. Before, a little bit of the, of the harsh light was getting in the background and uh, I just wanna minimize that. So I'm gonna go to ISO 100 and I'm gonna go to F16 so that the entire product is in focus and I'm gonna adjust my shutter speed accordingly to give me a, a good exposure on the product. So I would say something like that would look very nice. So I put the two second timer on the camera because when you are working with constant light or you have exposures that are not so fast, um, it creates camera shakes. So every time you push this button, your camera shakes and it makes your photo a little blurry. So by putting the two second timer, you can press the button and it's gonna take two seconds and all the shakes gonna go away and it will take your image. So I'm just gonna inspect the image over here and see what we got. Um, I think that this is a pretty nice result. And uh, since we're working with uh, I've a setup that is easy and fast to do with minimal equipment. I think that uh, anybody would be, would, would be happy with a result like this. Uh, now there are ways that we can elevate this image and make it a little better, uh, like lighting the background so it's a little of a brighter white color. Um, also, 
we can add another light instead of this reflector in order to control how much shade we get there and um, also in retouching we can um, remove the background so it's a an add 100 percent white background so that it's all even and there's not like uneven shades of color and uh, that can really help uh, take the image to the next level however um, clipping the image out of the background, cutting it out, uh, can be a bit time consuming. And uh, if you guys wanna see a tutorial on how to do that, comment below and uh, I can make a tutorial explaining the basics of cutting objects out of the background and some tricks that you can do to save some time. All right guys, that's a wrap. I really hope you liked the video. It's my first video tutorial that I've ever done. And if you would like me to keep creating content like this, just make sure to subscribe and like the video. If you have any questions, comment below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.